Hello everyone. Um, I am very, very sleepy, hence why I am in bed. But <laughs> So I'm going to take a nap, but um, I really want to talk to you guys about the book that I'm reading and I want to talk to you before I get any further in the book. I don't want to spoil anything. So this is spoiler free. I will give you a spoiler warning. This is a book <laughs> that has been recommended to me since the dawn of time. I think um, it's just one of those books that's kind of always floating around booktube, bookstagram, book communities. I've yet to hear someone say that they hate it. I've heard people say it was just good, but overall, um, most people say that they love it and it seems right up my alley. A lot of people that I really trust their book opinions have said that I would like it. So it is Strange the Dreamer. Yes, I'm finally reading it. Oh my god. Yeah, I have read the author's other uh, trilogy, I think it is, The Daughter of Smoke and Bone, and I loved it. I think in my like ranking fantasy series videos, I think I put it as like number three or two out of the whole year. I really love her dialogue. I feel like it's kind of rare for me to literally laugh out loud, um, especially when I'm reading like a fantasy. I would expect that in like rom-coms, but um, she just has this way of making characters, first of all, so distinct. They might be a little over the top and a little dramatic, but every single one of her characters has a really distinct personality and voice, which I really appreciate. So in my beginning of reading, I actually read from prologue until part two. I think I read like 13% of the book. And then this morning I went to get coffee and read for about an hour and I'm at 26% of the book. My thoughts so far. So again, no spoilers yet. Part one um, really centers around our main character named Laszlo and he was raised kind of as an orphan in a monastery. Ever since he was little he was obsessed with stories and legends and stuff like that which is discouraged in the monastery. Um, so he was kind of forced into, you know, quieting himself. And then one day he was allowed to run an errand because he has lived his entire life kind of in the monastery. He has to run an errand into the city um, to the library and he never leaves. <laughs> um, he just kind of stays there and then the librarians are like, you know what? you can stay like do you want to work here and he's like absolutely yes and so he like never leaves the library and he just continues this obsession with fairy tales and legends particularly this one legend which is what the whole book ends up being about is solving this mystery but his name is laszlo strange and thus he is strange the dreamer so we really follow him and then in part two we get to meet a Whole new cast of characters who I love um, and I can't really tell you much more without <sighs> spoiling anything but yeah it just really centers on like fairy tales and legends um, most of it currently is taking place like in the desert it's a very dry feeling book like everything is kind of decaying and dry. <laughs> it has already got me so interested because there was one character that was introduced and I totally thought we were going to go one way with it and now we're definitely not. Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. So I'm already interested just in the character dynamics, let alone like the bigger mystery. And then I also didn't know that this is a duology. I feel like most people are like, oh my god, Strange the Dreamer, I love it. And they talk about it as if it's a standalone. And maybe it could be. Maybe it's one of those like the sequel isn't necessary um but i got the sequel as well from the library so i'm gonna read that it's the something of nightmares but anyway i'm really enjoying it so far like i already knew that i loved the way that the author writes i'm very much um enjoying this already but i need to take a nap and then i'm gonna wake up and read a little bit more and i will come in and talk to you again so Chances are the next part of this will contain spoilers. So if you haven't read it yet, so far I do definitely encourage you to. I'm gonna turn the air conditioner back on and take a lovely nap. I can't wait. And I will see you then, okay? Bye. <laughs> Okay, hello my friends. So I'm coming at you 
post Strange the Dreamer. So I told you that I was going to check in um, a little bit later, but actually right after I talked to you, remember how I said I felt exhausted? So I think that ended up being like borderline heat stroke. I even took a COVID test because um, I was so nervous. It just hit me so hard. So I ended up kind of not even reading that day. I sort of just was in and out of sleep and then it wasn't COVID. I was fine. Um, I, I feel fully fine and my test was negative anyway. And then the next day I read, but I just felt not wanting to talk to a camera. So then I ended up finishing it last night. I just read it. It got very slow, I thought, but then after I got over that hump, I just like plowed through it. So anything after this moment is gonna be spoilers. So be on your way, my friends. Go read Strange the Dreamer and come back. So, bye. Okay. <laughs> Where did I leave you off? I left you off with no spoilers, right? So we meet, um, what's his name? Nero, the golden boy. I absolutely thought that this was gonna be a romance between Nero and our main guy, Laszlo. Kind of disappointed that it's not, but that's fine. So before, Laszlo and Sarai meet, I thought that that portion was really slow. Leaving the city until meeting Sarai, I thought was really difficult for me to get through. I really enjoyed meeting the kids who live in the Citadel. I didn't know that that was gonna be a thing. I didn't know what this book was gonna be about, so the fact that it's kind of about gods or angels or something like that, um, unexpected but really cool. And I enjoyed the switching of the POVs. I don't fully understand the ruby and the feral storyline. Mainly the parts that I was interested in was when Laszlo and Sarai were meeting each other. I thought that her power was so interesting and even though it was a little confusing for me, like the whole her falling asleep part, I still don't really know how that works, honestly. But overall, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I am in shock about the ending, even though the ending is literally spoilers. Get out. Last chance. Okay? <laughs> the ending is literally the first page of the book. Like, I knew what was gonna happen, but I was still just like, of all the people who had to fall, I thought it was gonna be Sparrow. Like, even though I had read the first page, obviously, and I knew it was Moth Girl, I still thought it was gonna be Sparrow that fell for some reason. Anyway, so yeah, it's, um, it's, I'm really enjoying it, but it's interesting that people feel so strongly about this book. I just wonder why there isn't as much love for Daughter of Smoke and Bone. You know, I feel like that is much more kind of up mainstream's alley. Um, so for Strange the Dreamer to be such a big one, I wonder was it based on like the timing that people read it? Like did they read it at a certain age or whatever? I just don't necessarily feel like the story is worth it being toted as like one of the most popular books and people really loving this book in the fantasy genre. It's just interesting. Like I, I had a friend who told me that it was a book that they had never read anything like it. Like it was so, I don't know, such a trip for them. And I'm kind of like, mm, I think I've read things like this before, you know? Um, nothing against the book, but it just isn't as astonishing and new. Like I felt like it is claimed to be, I don't know. I still really like it. I'm going to start Muse of Nightmares right now. I have a Korean class in, uh, I can't do math, three and a half hours, yeah. So I'm gonna read, I'm gonna probably get lunch um, and then I will report back. But yeah, overall, the Ruby Farrell thing confuses me. Oh, and I also thought that the, the amount of talking about rape um, was quite high for me to have never heard about that. Like, I, I feel like people are pretty good about giving sexual assault trigger warnings. Like, I know I might not necessarily point it out in, in my book reviews, but for, like, a book that is talked about as much as it is, I feel like I, I would have just stumbled across that warning beforehand, but, like, a huge part of this book is forced pregnancies. Um, the gods bring up human women and so there's a bunch of like these half human half god children by by rape. I was just so shocked to read that. I don't know. Um, like it, it fits in the story as gruesome and horrifying as it is. Like it it 
lends to the story well and kind of like shows us why the hatred could be so strong um, for the gods, but um, it was just weird that I hadn't heard about it. So anyway, yeah, that's in there. So, okay, um, I'm going to get into reading. I promise to update you before I finish Muse of Nightmares. I'm not gonna read it in one go. How long is it actually? Oh yeah, actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm on page two of Muse of Nightmares and there's a whole new cast of characters. I don't know if they're going to be in more of the story, if they're just like the people who show up in the first chapter, you know? But yeah, we have new, new people and like a whole new world or a whole new like city, kingdom, whatever. Anyway, ah, this is 510 pages, oh my god. Okay, so yeah, I definitely won't read it in one sitting. So I will catch up with you soon. Obviously this was not a standalone. Me being like, oh, maybe Strange the Dreamer is a standalone and like the duology is just like in, the second one's an extra book. No, that ending, I gotta know what happens. So, um, see you later. <laughs> Hi, it's a bit later. I just had my Korean class and I've been reading. I'm now on page 131. I'm on part two. And this Minya girl, what the hell? I'm really interested in how they're gonna solve uh, Sarai being a ghost. Um, right now, because they were talking a lot in the very, very beginning about is there any way to bring her back? Like, are there, cause all of these gods have different powers, right? So they're like, maybe there's a God that can do like bringing back from the dead. But the way that she died is she literally got stabbed. She like fell onto a gate and the gate went like through her. Um, and they're like, honey, no, <laughs> like nobody can bring you back. But because they talked about it so much, there's a part of me that's like, are they gonna find a way? Um, but then they burnt her body. So, I don't know. But yeah, Minya is annoying. I think that Farrell and Ruby's situation is being explained a little bit more. I don't know, that's still like a weird one for me. Um, poor Sparrow, like I just feel like she's just growing her little flowers, trying to live a happy life and everything around her is crumbling. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm just frustrated. Like, um, I'm not necessarily enjoying the plot. I'm just like doing mental chess, trying to figure out how this is gonna work out. I'm so interested in what's going on on the ground, Nero and girl whose name I can't pronounce that starts with a C. They just discovered the library of weep that got, the library of weep that got crushed by one of the anchors. I don't know. There's a lot going on and I'm very confused, but I'm intrigued. I think that Ruby is a very good teenage girl. Like the way that she's written, the way that Farrell can't understand what she's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get that. So anyway, I'm gonna get dinner in a little bit with Kurt and then he's working really hard today. So I might just come back and continue to read. Okay? Okay. Okay, so I think I vaguely, vaguely know what's going on. We basically have like three plot lines going on. We have what's happening in the Citadel. We have what's happening now with the library. Uh, and I, I had a feeling about Nero. I knew. And then we also have something that's happening now. Oh my God, you're going way too fast, my dude. Uh, those make me so nervous. We also have what's happening in the past, um, which is now coming to light is talking about the gods like these the citadel gods parents right um i'm pretty sure that cora is still alive in her like eagle form there is a dachshund without a leash okay that <laughs> sorry got a little distracting there what else oh my god there's just dogs everywhere there's a dog in that can you see him? <laughs> yeah, so anyway, uh, it's 
very good because I'm still very intrigued and I want to know what's going on. And um, yeah, this is definitely faster paced. Is it? Yeah, it's faster paced than um, the first one because I think the first one was just so much world building. Um, so this one is just like, we're going, going, going. And Sarai has just realized that she can go into dreams um, or into like people's minds when she touches them. So that's exciting. That's my update. I gotta go home. I'm only 30% of the way done with this book. Like what's gonna happen? Oh my God. So uh, let's go home. There's so, oh my God. There's just so, there's dogs everywhere I look. There's dogs everywhere I look. This is great. Okay, see you at home. Hi, very quickly checking in. What page am I on? Hi, I just went to a cafe to read. I'm on 237, so I'm 46% of the way through. And we have just realized that maybe the Ellens were evil and Minya was the one controlling the Ellens. Like she wasn't, the Ellens that they know don't exist. I, I can't explain, you know what I'm talking about. If you've come this far, I assume you've read this book. I hope you have. Um, oh my God. Um, so that's interesting. I want, we haven't gone backwards in time and seen the like baby gods in a while. Um, so I want to know what is going on there. In just one chapter, they managed, I had no feelings towards Azreen and what's the main guy's name? Errol Fane. Um, no feelings towards them. And then one chapter just made me, my heart, my little heart broke for them. So anyway, I'm going to eat. I have a Samgat Kimbap. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna take a little breather. I'm gonna turn on the air conditioner. Um, it's so hot outside. I got home right before. Can you see how black the sky is out there? Mm, doesn't look that scary on camera, but um, it's gonna rain a ton. It was the lightning last night was next level. I've never seen the sky. It wasn't even raining. It was just like that heat lightning. Um, I have never seen that much lightning in my life. So we're getting rain today. Got home just in time. It's just starting to spit out there. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna finish this book today. I feel it, but I need to have more than just coffee in my system. I just posted a video today that literally said, you shouldn't just drink coffee. You need to hydrate, you need to drink water. And who am I? What am I? See you when I need to update you next, okay. <sighs> Hi. Hi, everyone. I finished the book last night. When did I leave you? I think I was on like 30 something percent of the book. Oh no, I was like 40 something. I knocked it out in one go. Um, whoa, I wish I had talked to you last night, um, but honestly, like I just could not. I had put my phone far away. I didn't even record the lines that I wanted to talk to you about. The main takeaway from this book is that every single character was like deeply broken and had a incredibly sad, backstory. Um, I was not expecting the, what I thought was kind of the past to connect into the future. So in case you guys forget, there were kind of these three different plot lines we were following. One was the past where it was the, our main character's parents, um, mainly Cora and then her sister Nova, and they were getting tested if they were going to become gods or their fancy word for the blue people with powers um and then we also had everything that was happening in the citadel and then we had everybody on the ground the like just humans grappling with the fact that the only person they seemed to like in their entire like delegation caravan thing became a quote-unquote god spawn, which are the people that they're sworn to hate and kill so they're kind of just down on the ground digesting that. Up in the Citadel, we've got Minya, who wants to use her ghost army to kill all of the humans, and she is sort of losing her mind, so they end up drugging her and putting, keeping her asleep for a very long time. Sarai has found that her powers now, she can just touch someone and go into their brain, so she kind of does some snooping around, very like Paprika-esque, um, getting in there and figuring out like how to help these clearly broken people. The storyline in the past with Cora and Nova end up meeting with the people in the Citadel um, and just in Weep in general because we learn that there are a bunch of different universes. 
piled on top of each other and the purple, the blue people can move in between the worlds, okay? First of all, I loved that she referenced Daughter of Smoke and Bone. That was great. Um, when she was like, there's a queen with angels and demons and an army. And I was like, ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. ooh, I love the imagery of when they were talking about going through the worlds, going through like the layers, cause the universes are like stacked on top of each other. So all the blue angel people are like cutting through. That's how they um, talk about it. And it says, and then one of them cut a door too far. It opened into darkness and the darkness was alive. And I was like, oh, tell me more. But of course they didn't. Also chapter 42, what incredible heartbreak. It was just like, Every single person was so, so, so broken. And I think that the theme of this book obviously is just like forgiveness, um, forgiving yourself, forgiving others, um, and that keeping rage and wrath inside is only going to create so much more heartbreak. Um, and so yeah, I enjoyed it. I was kind of sad. I wish that we, I know we got a lot of it in the end, but I wish we saw a little bit more of the humans down below because I just loved those characters so much. And I really love how it ended. I think that's what all of them would have wanted. Everyone that like goes off on an adventure, like they are the people, like that's what they want. And so it just, it was a little bit open-ended in terms of like, what are their lives going to be like? But I think that it was, it tied up everything that I wanted it to. And the epilogue made me cry. And it was, yeah, it was just a, a great book. So if you haven't picked it up yet, I didn't know what it was really going to be about, but this runs quite parallel to A Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Like I said, I think that A Daughter of Smoke and Bone is more like mainstream in the fact that it's something about it feels like a pattern that I've read before. Like it's a enemies to lovers, kind of modern day, but then there's this door and you go through it and it's a fantasy world, it's a trilogy, etc. Something about that feels much more like something that I would assume more people would love. So it's interesting that I still just like haven't heard um, as much about Daughter Smoke and Bone. So here's my deal to you, lovelies. If you have read Strange the Dreamer and you loved it, especially if you loved the way that the humans bantered between each other or like Ruby and Farrell's banter, especially when, when Farrell is like, what does she mean kind of thing? Um, Cause I did think that that was very funny. They all grew on me a lot. Um, that is very heavily in Daughter of Smoke and Bone, so I highly encourage you to read it. Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I don't think it has as quite as much deep, deep sadness. It does, but I don't remember each person we meet having like such a horrific backstory. Like I said, the revolving around rape and like we finally called that god out for what he was is just like a straight up rapist for fun. He wasn't trying to like make money or whatever he ended up using um, all those children for. Like he was simply doing it for sick pleasure. There isn't that in Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Um, but anyway, yeah, overall this was just, it was great. Did I think that it was like the most life-changing story? No, but are these characters gonna live in me for a very long time? Yes. I love the author's way of writing. In turn, I know in my mid-year tag I said that I was reading a lot of meh books this year and uh, Strange the Dreamer might be in the running for some of my favorite books of the year. So um, yeah, thank you to everybody who recommended it. My heart was beating so fast at the end. I had no idea how they were gonna turn it around. Would I love a third book? I would love like a little epilogue novella just to see how Sarai's doing, you know? Maybe she's in Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I don't know. Like at this point, I have completely forgotten the trilogy and I need to reread it. Thank you guys so much for pushing me for years to read this book. I finally did and I'm very happy. So um, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below if you have any other books. And my lunch just, oop, nah. And my lunch just got delivered. I have them leave it outside. So we do contactless pickup still. I will see you guys next time. Thank you always. Um, see you later. Oh man, like my heart is still racing just thinking about that plot. Okay, go read it if you haven't. Why did you watch this video if you didn't read it? Ugh, all right, bye.